I would so much rather be the person that I am playing oh. at, the, at this level overseas and stuff like that than be the person I was becoming and yep. have the millions. Like I probably would have had an even harder yeah. fall had I just been able to get drafted, make Facts. millions, and then I just squander it and do who, who knows what. You know right. what I mean? Because I right. didn't develop the character. It all speaks for itself. Grinding the sound ain't nothing to tell. When we step on the court, we gon' bring it to light. And we stop and pop like we caught of the light. Stop asking what's wrong with me. You already know there's a dog in me. If there's no stopping my focus, man. Make sure all my people gon' ball with me. Yeah, I came to compete, I'm a dog with it. Yeah, I came to compete with my paws in it. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Compete Mentality Podcast. The Compete Mentality Podcast exists to motivate, educate, and inspire you guys to compete. Our definition of competing is doing what God calls you to do, even when it's hard. If you are a first-time guest, I want to welcome you. If you are a faithful listener, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. It means the world that we get to gather in this moment of time and eternity together each week. It's my pleasure to introduce our guest today, Evan Maxwell. Evan, thanks for joining the podcast today, man, my man. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Evan, man, I could go on and on about... Introducing Evan, he's a professional basketball player, fifth year, right? Yeah, Playing pro. Uh, Evan and I have been training together for three years. Evan played at Liberty, Kansas, and in Indiana Wesleyan in college. Um, super successful in basketball. He is a mindset coach here for Compete Training Academy, changing lives. And he's also, above all, a dear brother to me. So, Evan, I'm just really glad. This is – we're trying to add it up in our head, maybe like second, third, maybe fourth time, we don't even know, yeah. of you being on the podcast. So each and every time we get to have you, it's a treat. So. Yeah, always special, man. I appreciate the words. And I can't say enough about you, man, and the impact you have on my life. You're one of my best friends. You're part of my inner circle, someone I want to, you know, pouring into me every single day. I want to pour into you as well. And I love that, you know, we both have two kids and a wife, you know, so we're on similar journeys um, and it's just cool to be able to share that with each other. Oh, 100%. Um, even though I'm your trainer, the impact, I have to thank you that iron sharpens iron. And the, the training's fun, yeah. And I love seeing you go in your career. Uh, I'll brag on Evan that when he started training with me three years ago, uh, his three-point percentage has improved each and every year. I could go down, a, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But, like, what really – the things that I love is the, the after workout conversations or the 30 minute conversation pre-workout that we finally get into the workout after, you yeah. know, just the, the, those are the moments that we live for and that sure. make our relationship really special. But I want to dive in here with a uh, little lighter question, uh, you know, here at Compete Training Academy, a lot, a lot well, last night, just last night, uh, you and your family were here. We were grilling out here after a workout, and uh, we did some good old-fashioned Indiana corn on the cob, some burgers, some salmon. It, it was delicious. Delicious. Um, delicious. And we, we enjoy working hard, but we enjoy eating good, good healthy food as well. Yeah. If you're going on a date with your wife, yeah. and you get to choose one restaurant, and you've been a lot of places. This could be anywhere in this country. This could be anywhere overseas. Yeah. 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 You got one date. <laughs> Where well, are you going? You know how it is, man. Happy wife, happy life. It's going to be a good date if she gets the pick. And I'm, I'm <laughs> guessing, you know, nine times out of ten, we're going to Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> she likes the, the cactus Ro blossom and a yep. Caesar salad. And I'll get, you know, a steak and a sweet potato. <laughs> works for me. Works for her. It's a good <laughs> time. That, that's usually like that's like 99% of our days is just Texas Roadhouse. And you hey, mentioned man. being overseas. Um, obviously that's like unpredictable over there. So like when we get here, it's like to be able to have something, you know, that we like, we, we like a lot of different places, but that's the go-to date spot for sure. Uh, I love it. You can't, you can't go wrong with old faithful sometimes. No. It's like, it's going to be good. Right. It's, and I'm the type that's like, let's try something new. She's yeah. like, she knows what she I, I, likes I, and I hey, respect it. Woman you know what knows I mean? what she wants. Yeah, exactly. Shout so, out Molly. Yeah. No <laughs> I love it. Um, also shout out Molly. She had some wisdom last night. Sure we we, uh, we played the game at dinner called One Conversation mm -hmm. where we had – shout out our boy Rocco and Cam who were there and we just got done training. We grilled out and we played the game called One Conversation. So instead of like 
you know, it comes from a bunch of side conversations happening at dinner. We all talked about yeah. our aha moment for the summer. And Molly <laughs> dropped a bomb on everybody. Yeah. She said, I'll go first. And said, she talked about how powerful it was that she was able to go visit her family in South Carolina for a week and for the first time get away from her kids yeah. and take care of herself and how powerful that was yeah. for her and really how we got to fight to, she's got to fight as parents, parents, I'm talking to you right now. We got to fight to do that from a daily basis of living from that place of what we call here at CTA self renewal, like that you are, you feel renewed every day. So shout out Molly. Yep. Thank you for that. Ev, tell our audience about yourself and your family. Just tell us what's going on in your life, man. Well, I mean, that's a good, well, it's the second question, but that's like the good first question. Cause I'm a family man, man. That's the, the most important mm. thing to me. Um, love my wife and kids more than anything. I feel like, you know, as long as I do that right, you know, I'll be, I'll be content. Um, but yeah, I got two beautiful kids, four and two. And honestly, my approach with them, like it's easy to get caught up in like, I've got more experience. I need to show them the way I need to guide them. But like, I'm really trying to be intentional yeah. on just like learning from them. Um, Jesus mm. says the children are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and to just be careful. Like, don't, don't hinder them, kind of let them go. Wow. And obviously there's a balance, you know, I need to protect them and, and teach them some things. But at the end of the day, like my biggest goal is to become more present in life and to become um, you know, yeah, just simply that, just enjoy the little things. Like today they found a napkin and it was like blowing in the wind and it was the coolest thing in the world to them. And like, so Man. seeing stuff like that and like really trying to follow their lead a lot of times. And, you know, maybe I think, Hey, we should go this way. But you know, she says, let's go this way. Okay. Maybe I can humble myself and see what we have there because I'm, I'm caught up in the future. If we go this way, we'll, we'll experience this. She's like, I just want to go this way and we'll see what happens, you know? So um, that's huge for me. And then obviously, like, I think that um, a marriage, you know, mm. uh, Paul talks about, you know, he likens it to the relationship between uh, the church and, and God um, and just that, that unity and figuring out the balance yep. of being like two individuals, but yet being one flesh. And so um, that Amen. teaches me a ton about my relationship with God. And then obviously just that journey, man, like every day is a little bit different. Some days it feels like the same thing. Um, but it's just like coming together to, to work together through adversity to, to conquer challenges and stuff like that. Like I wouldn't change it for the world. It's, it's a huge blessing. Like I'm honored to, to be her husband and, and to be a father. So it's a little bit about us. <laughs> that, that's amazing, man. And uh, I love what you talked about a marriage and likening, uh, you know, Christ died for the church, right? Yeah. Uh, that's what we're supposed to do as husbands for our wives. And um, Man, that's so powerful right there. Evan, I want to talk about uh, a huge congratulations. You're going back for your fifth year overseas. Where are you going and Argentina. what are you excited about? Yeah, I'm going to Argentina. Um, I'm excited about a lot of different things, like the weather is one of the first things I think about. The, the seasons are opposite. So we'll be showing up at the end of their winter, and then we'll experience all the warm seasons. It'll be the hottest oh. in December. Um, so hopefully we'll get a little pool in the backyard, and maybe I'll get a bike to ride to practice yeah, every baby. day. Um, I might have to get used to some, some hot gyms and slick yeah. floors, who knows yeah. the humidity. So well, you're, you're prepared um, well at the yeah. bar here for that. Yeah. So it'll, it'll be uh, different. You know, I'm opening up a new market, um, you know, just marketing myself to a whole different world of teams yeah. and, and leagues and stuff like that. Uh, I heard the food's really good and all that stuff. Um, honestly, one of the biggest benefits and what I'm, I'm like grateful for is that the time difference um, normally we're dealing with like a six or seven hour time difference. Now it's only one hour. So it'll, it'll be one hour later in Argentina than it is here. And honestly, like, you know, a big piece of, you know, my, my, more Molly than anything, like being home and talking to family, she has a limited time to be able to do that. But then for me, like I have, I have a few mindset clients that, you know, it's hard to schedule with them, yeah. like, especially yeah. for the kids in school, like, you know, they're super right, How limited. are we going to do this? Exactly. So like, I, I'm giving them like, you can either get up at like 6am yeah. or like right after school or like, you know, um, or like, just... you know, if for adults, like in the middle of the work day or whatever, like it, it's challenging. So now to be able to like have that freedom to just kind of schedule how whatever fits in, um, is really nice. And so for my mindset clients listening, uh, remember that, like, we're going to have a lot easier time scheduling uh, appointments. So that'll be good. Absolutely. And let's dive into the mindset side of things. Um, people encounter 
different adversity. It's actually promised that it's coming. Yep. Um, James talks about adversity, trials, um, that we should actually find joy in them. Uh, we talk about fear mm-hmm. a lot in mindset training with our clients. You know, fear is false evidence appearing real. I want you to share with our clients and our audience here tonight just the a time that you had a fear and you overcame it. Yeah, so, I mean, when you ask that question, like, there's a flood of answers, you know, like, we, we deal with fear all the time. I mean, even now, um, you know, every day I think that, like, even subconsciously, you know, you have a fear of something. Um, but... I, I got nothing but the best. I want to be as raw as I can on this. Um, I feel like probably the biggest fear that I've overcame um, was the fear of failure. And I think that like the reason that comes to mind is because I used to say I was motivated by the fear of failure. That was like my motivation. So like not only was I just afraid to fail, but like I actually put that at like the center of my work ethic. And like mm. I'm so afraid to fail for X, Y, and Z, like, I'll prove the haters right, and I want to prove the haters wrong, and what if I fail my family, and what if I let these people down, you know, it came from a good place, and, like, I was, I didn't come up with that on my own, you know, I was taught that, and a lot of, um, you know, coaches, and a lot of, you know, people in authority motivate people through fear, that's, it's just a tactic that I think, you know, is hopefully dying now, but, um, you know, they, they strike fear into the, into the people that, you know, you gain control over them, put them on edge and they'll do anything for you and stuff like that. Um, the problem is like when you, when you base your motivation on fear of failure, like I'm thinking about, even in that statement, like <laughs> I'm putting fear and failure at the center of my attention. You know what I mean? And right. it's something I don't want. So, um, I mean, you know how it works. The more you focus on something, the more you're going to experience it. So I was like, well, why am I experiencing all this failure if I'm like trying to um, you know, work away from that. But that's, for me, overcoming that um, was really just, you know, reshaping my view of failure. And I, I like what you, you already brought up, you know, consider it joy when you face trials. And um, like, you're supposed to be excited when you face adversity um, and pushback and even failure. I mean, the amount of quotes, I could, I could go oh. off a hundred quotes about how failure is the key to success. You don't succeed unless you first fail. So um, for me now, like, and I think just for anyone listening, like your fear, rather than being afraid, like actually dive into it and look at it and embrace it. So for me, that fear of failure, I needed to sit and look at failure and, and learn actually what failure really is. Um, and and I, I learned pretty quickly, like, that's actually what I want. So instead of being motivated by the fear of failure, it's like motivated by the opportunity to fail, more opportunity to fail and put myself in positions of failure because I know that that's what leads to, to getting stronger. Um, so like, yeah, that, that was huge for me. Just yeah. embracing that and understanding, you know, although like I was kind of, you know, the thoughts were put into my head to run away from failure. You want, you want to succeed with well, yep. you better not fail. Um, and just realizing like to reshape that, um, you know, the failure is the only way that I'm actually going to grow and get better. Ugh. Um, that's you, huge for me. You nailed it. Failure is the only way to grow. Think about when you go to the rate, the weight room, yeah. you go till failure. That's how you build muscle. Yeah. That's Resistance. how you get stronger. Yeah. When you go run, you run till you can't run anymore. That's how you grow. You run until you fail. Until you can't go anymore, you stop. Well, and even to take that further, not all of us do run until we fail. And, and we, we run until we are comfortable. And, okay, I succeeded the day I got my yeah. miles. And then you're just going to keep doing the same thing. You're not actually going to improve. Right. A, a story I love that my mom told was when she was growing up skiing, she loved skiing. And it was like she just prided herself on, I'm not going to fall. I'm not going to I had a whole summer where I didn't fall. And then she wasn't getting any better. And then when she realized, oh, like, if I don't fall, I'm not going to learn these cool tricks and doing all the people around her who are falling were getting better. You know, so it was actually when she embraced the falling that she got better and she fell even more in love with it. Yep. You know, yep. that's big. For no, me. that's huge. Um, let's, I, I want to, I want to, we're going to keep getting real. Yep. That's what we do here on this <laughs> podcast. We're going to keep getting real. We talked about failure. I want to talk about adversity. Like, we talk about all in the podcast all the time, like, and in our training on the court, like, when adversity hits, this shows our true colors, right? When adversity hits, when life squeezes you, 
when adversity squeezes you, your true self is revealed. Mm. So we talk about the orange all the time. When you squeeze an orange, orange juice comes out. When life squeezes you, when adversity squeezes you, is it the fruits of the spirit that come out? Mm. Love, joy, peace, patience, mm. kindness, gentleness, self-control, or is it fear, anxiety, worry, depression, all this stuff? But the adversity is what really shows your true color. So I want you to talk about a time you went through some adversity and now hindsight being 2020, you're extremely grateful for it. Yeah. Um, again, man, just a flood of times. I mean, now, especially now that I've embraced adversity, like now every day, like I'm putting myself in adverse situations, but then even that, like you can't control your circumstances. So, um, I would, you know, again, I have a lot of stories to share and I feel like the most recent that come to mind, it's, it's after I have already overcome this. So now I'm at a place where as the adversity is happening, yeah. as hard as it is, it's like, all right, I know this is what, what's needed. Like it, I could have a horrible day and like, I could even be like upset about it. But then deep down, I'm like, dude, you know, this is what is, this is what you asked for. You want a result and this is God's path for you. Um, but I'll share a story, probably the biggest um, you know, biggest moment of adversity in my life, or at least, you know, in my basketball career, um, before I even knew any of this. Um, so we're going to rewind a little bit back to my college days. Um, for a little bit of context, I had just come off of a good year at Liberty. Um, the conference that I was in was kind of like, you know, the centers were kind of like six, five football player build kind of guys. So like for a six, 10, you know, kind of mobile big, like it wasn't a good fit for me. Um, so I decided to transfer and I'm, I feel on top of the world. I'm going on these visits. Um, I'm playing the best basketball of my life. Um, going into that process, I, I was pretty clear with myself and God, like I want the blue blood school, like I want a Duke or a North Carolina, like this, that's what I want. Um, and so, so I got that. I mean, I had a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different offers, um, for people curious, uh, my top five was Cincinnati, Baylor, Arizona, Virginia tech, and Kansas. That's what it came down to. Um, and on paper probably should have went to Virginia tech. Um, but obviously I'd already made my mind up, um, and God had a bigger plan. So That's right. I go to Kansas and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm like, I'm playing the best basketball of my life. I'm, I'm confident. I'm, I'm killing, you know, um, but the adversity piece. So before, you know, the last semester at Liberty, I got bit by a tick and I, I felt it. I remember pulling it off and I had a buddy with me and I was like, you think that's good? And he's like, yeah, you're fine. Like there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, All right, cool. And like, I'd never even thought about it. I think I told my mom and my mom was like, you should probably get checked whatever Lyme disease. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like what's Lyme disease? I don't have Lyme disease. That's silly mom. Like don't. Um, so fast forward, I, I'm again on top of the world, but then all of a sudden boot camp comes around and I've been through boot camps. I've been through conditioning. Um, I start getting lightheaded, major fatigue. It's a, it's an extra long story, but like just to put it into the best words possible, like I couldn't get out of bed. I was depressed. I was unhappy. I, I didn't have strength. I didn't have energy. Um, and so I left Kansas like after a semester and talk about humbling, you yeah. know, like get exactly what you want, go exactly. And I think that's why God wanted it to be that because it's a harder fall from, from that, you know, you don't get higher than that in college. And so I needed to fall. Um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the things that I, the reasons I wanted that, um, you know, obviously I wanted to go to the NBA. I wanted to be a draft pick. I wanted, um, money, fame. I wanted all those things, you know, I wanted good things too. Um, mm. but like quickly realizing like, you know, this isn't the magical world that I thought the highest level of basketball would be like, it's a business. And it's, it, so it was, it was humbling for many different reasons. Um, I come home and end up, you know, finding out I actually do have Lyme disease and it's been eating away at me for like a year. And normally if you catch it quick, you can just take some antibiotic, it'll go away. But, um, it had been deteriorating my muscles. It mm. had been getting into my brain. Like if you if it goes on, I, I've met people who it goes on yep. team, like this guy is in a wheelchair, like he can't move and his kids ended up having it just right. through, you know, and like it, you get, you can go like insane in your, in your mind. Um, so through all that, you know, I end up coming in now Wesleyan. I'm not at all the guy that they expect me to be. Um, I am on tons of antibiotics. I'm on tons of medicine. I'm giving myself two self injections per day. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was tough, you know, and then obviously to come into NAIA thinking, okay, I should kill. And everyone, 
he's coming from Kansas, he should kill. Um, just a good illustration. You know, man's club. Yep. Uh, one of the tests is how many, you know, trying to get 15 reps of 185. So one 185 pound bench press, I got one rep my, my junior year. Yep. After getting healthy my senior year, I got 20 reps. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the amount of muscle. Wow. Like I was skinny, you know, I was, you know, it wasn't myself and, and, yeah. and it was challenging. I was trying to back people down in the post and it just wasn't working. I had to change my game, all this and wow. that. Um, but I know that's a little long winded story, but like, that was just an example of like, you know, where I realized it could all go away at any point, you know, mm. and for whatever reason. And, um, you know, if I, if I lose my physical ability, but I put all of my stock in my basketball career, then what happens? You know, it's, it's right. more about who I'm becoming as a man and who I want mm. to be off the court. Oh. Um, and then even just physically, man, like the, one of the most humbling things after Lyme disease was like, Hey, you can't eat yeast and sugar and yeah. yeast and sugars and everything. <laughs> like, yeah. I had to give up all my, like, I just remember hungry nights. Like, Oh, all uh, I can eat is these berries. Like I don't even like berries. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yep. um, but like fast forward now, like I look back, yes. obviously that humbling experience, obviously like getting, you know, learning to put my, you know, my heart and soul into more lasting things other than just a wow. basketball career. And on a physical standpoint, that too, like I was, I was, you know, my favorite foods were taken away, pizza rolls with hot yep. sauce on it, <laughs> crap like that. And like now, you know, my favorite thing is like Greek yogurt and berries before bed or um, just different things like that. You know what yep. I mean? And like, so as an athlete, that experience of learning my diet has changed everything. Um, yeah. And pretty much maintaining that diet. Like I'm, I'm free from Lyme disease. Now I'm healthy. Yep. Um, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm, I'm feeling better. I feel like I'm just now, you know, getting Looks started great. with my career. Yep. Um, yes. but like, that's just, man, like I look, there were, there were years where I would lay in bed and like, what if, like, what if I just humbled myself and got checked for Lyme disease? Like I, I probably would have had a good career at Kansas, would have got drafted and blah, 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 all this stuff. And just like, yep you know, kind of rejecting that and, and being resentful of that and, mm. and hating that. And now I look back and I'm like, dude, like there on paper, like there is just an infinite number of things that have happened through that. Like I wouldn't be sitting here with you. No. Namely, like, no, I might we not wouldn't. have the kids that I have. I might not have the, the relationship wife. with my family, the wife, <laughs> exactly. Like everything, the, the amount of people that, you know, I've met from Indiana Wesleyan. And then like on a basketball career standpoint, like I'm still a pro. Like I still, right. um, like my path was just different. <laughs> a very high you know? level pro. And yeah. so like, it's just a, it's just a different path and I needed to learn that. Um, and now I'm just, I wouldn't trade anything. Like I would so much rather be the person that I am playing uh, at, the, at this level overseas and stuff like that, than be the person I was becoming and yep. have the millions. Like I probably would have had an even harder yeah. fall had I just been able to get drafted, maybe millions and then I just squander it and do who, who knows what, you know right. what I mean? Because I right. didn't develop the character. So appreciate you for listening to the story. Oh, dude, um, you just like, killed that's, that. Yeah, that's just, that's raw and real. And like, talk uh, about fear. Like it, it's scary to even share that story. You know what I mean? For um, sure. And it's, it's vulnerable, but um, I just want this people to know. So, like, no, thank you so much for sharing that. And <laughs> I can't wait to re-listen to that question and that story again in this podcast when I listen to this. Mm. But it's the point of you having the spiritual awareness and the spiritual depth and maturity that you understand that God is working all things together for your good to make you the, per the man you're supposed to become. Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. It's not about obtaining the dream. Yeah. It's really not. Right. You and I talked about in the barn yesterday that – Great dreamers, dreams are are transcended. Mm -hmm. You never really achieve them. So, like, okay, you go to the league, okay, you get the fat contract. Then what? Oh, you're, you you want to be an all star, right? Then what? You want to be a hall of famer. Yeah. Then what? Right? Then what? Yeah. You there's when you, you there's always more. So this is why the scriptures talk about focusing on not what is seen for what is seen is transient, but for what is unseen is eternal. Once you get to that point where you can really focus on those unseen things every day, yeah. which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, right? When you yeah. can focus on those things, that is when, as the scriptures say, you can bring heaven to earth. Yeah. It's, it's who you are, not where you are. You know, I, all the time, like I talk to people all the time, people have goals and it's, and it's amazing. And like, you really can, like you can, you can achieve goals. You can have yeah. the life that you want. But I, I want to emphasize like, 
you know, it may not be actually that location, but what we're drawn to is that version of ourself that we think that that will prove about us. Like if I can be an NBA player, then it'll prove my work ethic. Yep. But instead, yep. like focus on, okay, well, what do you, like, what is that going to validate about you? That you work hard, that you're a good basketball player, you believe in yourself, X, Y, and Z. Well, then focus on that character yep. and embodying that character and being that version of yourself. Yes. Because you may chase the NBA and get there, and then you're not that version of yourself. And then, like you said, it just keeps going and going and going. If you never actually you know, satisfy yeah. the unseen and that character of who you are, then when you get where you want to go, you're, not gonna, you're still not going to be where you want to be. You know what I mean? So That's it. You've got to do it under the surface. So good. Okay. So good, Evan. Evan, I want to wrap up um, by allowing you to tell our audience how they can follow you, how they can get a hold of you. Evan is onboarding mindset clients right now before he goes overseas and um he would love to work with you um evan how can our audience get a hold of you uh easiest way is through instagram evan to maxwell um you can just dm me hit me up if you know jd hit him up and he can give you my number yep um whatever but yeah instagram is i'm not a huge social media yeah. guy um but i do have instagram so yep. you can hit me up there and uh, also through our website, competetrainingacademy.org. Send an inquiry. We'll get it to Evan. Uh, Evan will change your life. He will change your life by working with him. Um, I have a son who's six, and if he grows up to be like Evan Maxwell, I would be so happy. Uh, Evan, thanks for joining that, us today. Man. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Yeah, of course, man. Thank you so much. CTA family, always remember that competing is doing what God calls you to do, even when it's hard.